Hey guys, so I have a new foundation routine. I've spoken about it, but I haven't actually showed you what I'm doing now. So I thought that I would start to get ready, and while I'm doing that, I thought maybe I would just give you my thoughts on the uh, video that Tati posted yesterday. Um, wow, that, that was really intense. I'm sure a lot of you have watched it. If you haven't seen it, then you're probably somebody that isn't really interested in the YouTube beauty gar be blah. <laughs> YouTube beauty drama that goes on with the gurus, and um, that's fine. I I totally get that. Um, I well, let me get started with the makeup, and then I'll start to tell you what I think about all this. All right, the first thing that I always do is use my lip treatment product. This is the Wet n Wild Lip Treatment. And wow, I can't talk today. This is not a good way to start the video. This is uh, grapefruit and mint. This is the only scent that it comes in. You wouldn't think, I know I say this every single time, but you would not think that grapefruit and mint would smell good together but it does and I have hit pan on it so I obviously enjoy this a lot so yeah that video was really something else my husband came home from work while I was watching it and he goes oh I know who that is that's Tati because I used to subscribe to her I I've subscribed and unsubscribed from her many times for various reasons um, I do that with a lot of people actually and it's not that I'm not loyal to the people that I watch it's that um, sometimes my tastes change and sometimes I just don't enjoy somebody's videos anymore or maybe they're focusing on things that don't interest me or there's a million different reasons why I might unsubscribe from someone but the last time I had unsubscribed from her was when she dropped that video that she did um, about James where she was calling him out for being um, problematic and with his attitude about a lot of things and anyway I didn't think that was right I didn't think it was right to do it on a public platform like that if she had if there were things about James that was bothering her that made it difficult for her to be friends with him, she should have just talked to him on a personal level instead of making a video about it. That's That really rubbed me the wrong way. And that was why when she released her palette, I didn't buy it. Well, plus it has a lot of glitter in it too, and I'm not really that crazy about glitter. I mean, I do use it, but... Um, on my eyes, I like to use it sparingly. Uh, I'm going to use the AOA Studio High Def Brush in F4. And I'm going to use the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. This is the second time I've purchased this. I finished my first one. And then I just started using other things. And I realized that I really missed this so I went out and got it and this is the one called sheer but it comes in at least one other shade so yeah I didn't like it the way she handled that that really rubbed me the wrong way and all I kept thinking was if I was James I would just you know be devastated he lost tons of subscribers and um, you know, this was somebody that he thought was his friend, and she did that. So, I watched her video yesterday. Now, of course, I was curious to see what she was going to say. And in the video, she said, uh, if you haven't seen her video yet, go and watch it, because there's going to be spoilers in here. But in her video, she said that, you know, she has since talked to James... And he forgives her for doing that. Now that speaks volumes to me. I've never really been a huge James Charles fan. 
I do watch his videos occasionally. I don't watch all of them, but I watch, you know, when they pop up in my subscription feed, I just kind of pick and choose and watch the ones that I feel like watching that look like they might be interesting. And I did buy his Morphe palette that he came out with, uh, what was that, like a couple of years ago? And um, so, yeah, let me preface this by saying that I like him, but he's not my favorite person. I don't know. He's just, he's kind of, he's kind of uh, a bit much. <laughs> he's a little too animated and flamboyant for my taste. Um, but anyway, the fact that he forgave her for that tells me, pff, wow, I, I couldn't do it if I was James I could not forgive her for doing that. That was that was wrong. She know at least she knows it now and realizes that. And you'd think that, you know, she would have talked to like her husband James about that first and you'd think he would have made her realize, you know, this is a huge mistake. But maybe he didn't see it either. I don't know. Um okay. Next, I'm going to get into correctors and concealers. I have a ton of correctors and concealers and what I've been doing lately is I've been switching them out like every day trying to figure out which combination works best so this is not really part of my daily routine because um, I use different ones all the time so today I'm going to use the LA Colors Smoothing Face Primer Color Correcting um, in the shade Peach now this is supposed to be a face primer. I mean, it says it right there. But everybody I know <laughs> that uses this uses it as a under eye circle corrector. So, um, so anyway, she she talked to James, I guess, and he forgave her, and everything is okay with them now. And um, that's yeah, that's amazing. I would never, never be able to forgive somebody for doing something like that. So that tells me, you know, James is basically, I guess, a good person if he was willing to forgive her. But then there's something else to consider. Is he just forgiving her because he's eventually going to plot her demise and try to get back at her? <laughs> Maybe he just wants her to think that he forgives her. I don't know. I, I would hope not, but geez, you know, the way people are nowadays, you never know. So, as far as everything Tati said about Jeffrey and Sean, uh, Sean? Why am I saying Sean? Shane. <laughs> Jeffrey and Shane. Um, I don't know. It's It's possible. Anything is possible at this point. There is something else to consider, you guys, that nobody is talking about. Just out of curiosity, I watched some of the Drama Channel's videos that they did on this just to see what they would say, and not one person brought this up. Um, yeah, let's keep moving along, too. Okay, so now we get to the foundation, Elf Flawless Finish Foundation in the shade Beige. I always, always shake your foundation. It's really important and nobody ever remembers to do it. Um, something to take into consideration about this Tati situation. Did anybody see the live reaction footage that Shane posted on his Insta stories? He was flipping out. He was watching Tati's video and then reacting to it and then filming himself reacting to it. And he kept saying, oh, she's she's lying. She's fake crying. And at the time, I thought, fake crying? Lying? Really? Is that what you think? And then I thought, well, she's talking about him, so I guess he would know. I mean, he was there and he was involved in the situation. And then it was like a light bulb going off on my head. I remembered something I had read about Tati from a long time ago. And like I said, none of the drama channels are talking about this. Before she was a YouTube beauty guru, do you know what Tati did for work? 
she was an actress. So <laughs> when Shane said she was fake crying, I thought, well, if anybody could do it and put on a performance like that, it would be Tati because she was an actress and she was an actress when she was quite young. So that is, I'm not saying that I think that she was lying. I'm just saying that it's a possibility that if anybody could get up there and do that and do it convincingly, it would be a former actress. So I guess she got out of acting because, you know, it's such a competitive field that it's really hard to get work and be successful doing that. So where does this leave me in terms of purchasing? Because she kept saying, it's really important that you, when you buy makeup, that you buy it smartly and only buy from people that are trustworthy or something like that. Was it her that said that? Because I watched so many videos um, yesterday. I also watched videos of people that said that they were no longer going to support Jeffree Star and that they weren't going to buy his makeup anymore. Quite a few people that I subscribed to did video, posted videos like that. Where does it leave me and my purchasing decisions? I honestly don't know, you guys. I was, I was thinking about buying Tati's palette. I talked about it in my video, old makeup that I still want. And now, I don't know that I want to buy from any of these people. I don't know. It's, <clears throat> I'm not going to say uh, one way or another what I'm going to do. I, I have no idea. I really love Jeffrey's makeup. The quality is unbelievable. The color stories are really fun. The packaging is very artsy. But I don't know. It's probably going to be a while. He just dropped the, the cremated palette. So it's going to be a while probably before I have to make that decision. But I guess something to take into consideration is the only reason why we know about all this is because these people put their whole lives out there on their social media. They don't keep anything private. Like, I've been on YouTube for 11 years. And I've talked about and posted some personal stuff, but I know where to draw the line. Um, I don't put my my whole family and my videos and friends and I don't post and film and record every moment of my life. I mean, I think that there has to be a separation between your public life and your personal life. So they've kind of brought this on themselves. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know I know that's what people want to see. People have asked me many times, oh, can you do a husband does my makeup video or something like that? My husband does not want to be on YouTube. And I don't blame him. Um, you know, there's there's too many repercussions from that. And it's it's a huge risk to put yourself out there. I could tell you stories. Um <laughs> But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think if they had been a little more, um, less forthcoming and kept their private lives more private, they wouldn't be, when I say they, I mean Tati, James, Jeffrey, Shane, they wouldn't be having all these problems that they're having if they had made YouTube more of a professional thing and knew where to draw the line with their personal lives. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in the shade Fair Beige. So I don't know what I'm going to do going forward buying makeup from Jeffrey or Tati and she said something about James developing a makeup line with Morphe but she also said that Jeffrey is part allegedly part owner in Morphe. So if he hates James now, then obviously that's not, he's not going to let him have a makeup line. I don't know how much of 
a percentage he has in that, but I don't know. So I'm just going to play it by ear. I'm going to just, you know, buy the makeup that I want to buy and not really think about it too much. But what I was going to say before is we don't know anything about the personal lives or opinions of most of the people who own makeup companies. We only know what's going on with Jeffrey because he has a YouTube channel and because he's all over social media. But, all right, think of another makeup company and then think about who owns it, if you even know who owns it, and then tell me something about their life. There aren't that many people that really put themselves out there to that degree. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if we knew the people who own all the makeup companies and we knew as much about them as we do Jeffrey, we might not want to buy from them either. But they're smart enough to keep their private lives private. Just saying. So for me, mostly, you know, makeup is makeup. And if I really want something, I'm going to get it. And I don't care who owns the company, really. So maybe I'm wrong for feeling that way. But that's just how I feel. Um, I've noticed that since I've been doing a lot of videos using Jeffree Star products that I've lost some subscribers. And I understand that. I understand there's a lot of people that really hate him. Um, but I really like his makeup, so I don't know. Okay, so what is next? Um, oh, when I was buying some of these e.l.f. products, I saw this. And I definitely never tried this before. It's e.l.f. HD Powder. And it's in the shade Soft Luminance. And I said, ooh, that sounds interesting. And I held it up and looked at the side of it to try to see the color. And it's like a, it's just like a, a beige, I guess you would say. Elf powder brush. So I'm just going to tap some into the cover. And this does not give that much luminance, in my opinion. I do like the texture of it. I like the feel of it. You know, most people would think powder is powder, right? Not at all. I mean, I have the Maybelline Fit Me powder. I have this e.l.f. powder. I have the Cody Air Spun powder. I have um, the e.l.f. Pressed powder, and I have probably two or three other powders. And wow, each one feels and looks completely different on the skin. So powder is not just powder. Okay, I think what I'm going to do, you guys, is I don't want this video to be like an hour long. So I think I'm going to stop filming and I'll come back on at the end and just show you what else I did for makeup. And then you can read in the description box what the products are if you're interested. So it had been a really long time since I had put blue on my lids. So I've got a blue and gray look on my eyes today. You know, as I was finishing up my makeup, I thought, I wonder what's going on with the numbers for these people. So I quickly went to each one of their channels and wrote down how many subscribers they had because I think it will be interesting to see long term as this escalates or goes along how are these people going to, are they going to lose a lot of subscribers? Are certain people going to gain subscribers? So I just went to their channels and Tati has 9.42 million subscribers. Jeffrey has 
17.8 million subscribers. James Charles has 19.8 million subscribers. And Shane Dawson, this one was a real surprise. Um, Shane has 22.4 million subscribers. Now, the reason why that surprised me is because I've been subscribed to Shane only for about um, a year or two. Like, I watched his two series that he did on Jeffrey. I watched the Jake Paul one. I watched the one he did on Bunny, um, Graveyard Girl. And I watched some of his conspiracy theories videos. But prior to that, I didn't watch him because I didn't like any of that stuff. He did like comedy and it wasn't really funny. It was just sick. Um, but since people have been trying to cancel him, um, there's been a lot of stuff on the drama channels showing clips of some of the videos that he has done in the past. And oh my God, some of that is really sick and twisted. And that's kind of made me like look at him differently now. And, um, but I do like his recent work, I have to admit. So I, like he said, you know, he's not the same person that he was back then. And he's, he's changed, he's grown, whatever. He realizes that that stuff isn't funny. Um, so as long as he continues to do the type of stuff that he's been doing the last year or two, I would stay subscribed to him. Although I heard Shane has three channels, I guess, and I heard that all his videos have been demonetized. His channels have been demonetized because YouTube is pissed um, about everything that has happened. So there'd be no point in him making videos, continuing to make busy videos, if um, his channels stay demonetized. So... I don't know what's going to happen with all this stuff, guys, but right now, as it stands, I'm subscribed to all four because even though it is people's lives and it's kind of sad and sick and twisted, it, it is interesting, and uh, I'm curious to see what's going to happen with all of this and who's going to come out on top, and I don't know, maybe a lot of times I've noticed like when Jacqueline Hill had all her scandals, like with the hairy lipsticks and the faulty eyeshadows, and it seemed like no matter what happened, she just would come back and do something else and people would buy it. So I don't know. It's almost like some, the people that are popular are almost like untouchable, like they can do no wrong because even when it's pointed out, things that they've done wrong or things that went wrong it it's like even though we have this cancel culture it's almost like um it doesn't matter what they do because they they come back and people buy whatever they put out there which is kind of strange but i don't know doesn't make any sense to me but what i'm gonna do going forward i'm still not sure yet I think I'm just gonna like take it one day at a time and not really put too much thought into it. And um, if something appeals to me, I'll buy it, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm not sure at this point. I am kind of turned off by all these people to a certain degree because of it, because it's so unnecessary, like I was saying earlier. But um, yeah, we'll see. All right, so that's it for today, you guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.